Okay, this video requires, well, a little backstory. Eight years ago, I reviewed the Anet A8. Everybody loved that printer. Now, that became hugely successful, very, very popular. It was the first affordable 3D printer on the market. Then came the Creality Ender 3, the CR10. All those reviews became very, very popular all throughout YouTube, but also on my channel. So I just kept posting reviews. And at the end of it, I had tested more than 50 3D printers. Then I just completely stopped because I don't think too much was happening three, four years ago. They were getting larger, but the CR10 was such a huge success. And the 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume was kind of more than enough for most people. But then two years ago, something happened. They became faster, way, way faster. Okay, okay, this video is not at all sponsored by Creality. In fact, let's take a look at the K1 Max and its most potent design flaw. I managed to break not one, but three of the panels that are made out of glass. The first one I dropped into water, the second one I broke, and the third one I broke again. It's the fact that the hinges can't open all the way, so you eventually just slam the door open and it will break. But here's the deal, just to give you a baseline, I'm printing a Benchy here, and I realized I've never actually printed a Benchy on this machine before. And honestly, I was blown away by how fast this thing was. What used to take an hour with the Creality Ender 3, this one banged out in 19 minutes flat. Sure, there are definitely faster Benchies out there on YouTube. I mean, we're talking sub 10 minute Benchies, but let's be real, when you start pushing those speeds, you're sacrificing a lot of printing quality. Yeah, it's fast, but at this point, I'd much rather take something that takes 19 minutes and looks good than something that takes nine minutes and looks awful. Now this 19 minute bench that we did, honestly, it holds up. It's on par with something that you would get from something like the Creality Ender 3, except that would take, what, an hour to pull off the same print? So yeah, flexing the speed without throwing the quality out the window, that's the kind of balance you wanna see. All right, just to give you some more examples, a little perspective on how fast this thing really is. Well, let's start with the gutter hangers. Yeah, these were printed in 100% infill. In just two hours, it managed to do what an older machine would have done in five, six hours. Nuts. So yeah, if in the next video the gutters are mysteriously gone, you know they didn't make it. Next up, Reims Notre Dame. This print I've done many times before. It's always a plus 30 hour print. This knocked it down to 12. So it's nice to be able to just turn on the printer, come back the next morning and it's done. I actually have a larger model inside and it's one of my all time favorite models to print. I think it's super nice. I turned off all retraction settings to save on time, but the burner, yeah, kind of makes it go away. And then the actual gutter, I, yeah, I needed a custom one. It knocked it out in four hours flat, not bad. But here's the kicker. I also needed a custom mount to keep it in place and that printed in just under 40 minutes, wild. I'm in the middle of a snowstorm right now, but here's the gutter. The 3D printed one looks great, goes down to a non 3D printed pipe. And here is the mount, holding up just great. Of course I wanted some lighting too, so I printed this sick mesh style lampshade and it was done in under six hours. And to finish things off, a holder for the switch, that one, 14 minutes. Okay, right about 14 minutes. And it's bone stock, I haven't changed a thing. If you were to go with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, you could probably have made this in eight or seven minutes, which is precisely what I'm saying. It took me five minutes to sketch up, 14 minutes to print. And there I have it, my holder for the switch. It's insane. That really is a game changer. Even though the game changed happened two years ago, I'm just late to the party. That's really fast. And here is the switch for the light. Sick. And those lights are being powered by my solar station and four solar panels on top of the chicken house. If there is one takeaway here, it's this. I'm still getting bombarded with messages from you guys asking, what's the best 3D printer? Well, that's a really tough question to answer because you see some people are looking to spend just $100. Some are ready to drop 10 times that. Now, after making not one, not two, but three comparison videos featuring 30 printers in just three videos, I can tell you this. Those printers are getting older for sure, but a lot of you guys are still using them and loving them. So here's the deal. That's why I haven't been testing a ton of printers recently because I've been stuck with 
these faster models and honestly they can do everything that those other printers could do but like three times faster so now don't get me wrong there are other newer models that i would recommend over this the bamboo lab x1c i think it's called and these are all rocking the core xy setup for the initiated that means that the x and y axis is working in tandem and the set axis is just going up and down that seems to be the winning formula right now. But to bring it back, just a few years ago, printers were getting incrementally better, small improvements here and there. But now I feel like we've hit a major leap forward with these much faster machines. So this summer I built this deck. The idea was for the posts to line up seamlessly with the top rail. But since the top rail was curved, getting a clean cut not happening. So I 3D printed these custom cutout squares and used the heat gun to mold them to fit perfectly against the top rail. It's been more than six months and so far they are holding up. So fingers crossed they last, but hey, it works. We also got chickens as you may have seen in some other videos and I built this insulated room for them to keep warm during the winter, which they by the way hate. I've never seen a chicken in here, not even once, but I also didn't want to go to the store and get some hinges and a lock. So I improvised, I 3D printed hinges and this is an extremely heavy door and so far it's holding up like a champ. They've never really liked me. 3D printed lights, not bad. 3D printed reinforcements for this tent so the wind doesn't take it. Feet for this drawer, Christmas star, door stop. Uh, Alright, most of the times it works. Adjustable feet for projector, designed caps to hide wires. While the plates aren't very expensive, the tool holders and all the accessories, they're real expensive. So whipping up boxes like this and customizing your tool holders is just what 3D printers are made for. The speed, uh, well, it, it brings drawbacks. I can imagine this being a problem with all printers with the purpose of speed. It's noise. It sounds like a jet engine is kicking on when the turbofan kicks in. It's insane. Kind of the baseline temperature of a PLA is 200 degrees Celsius. I'm running 235 and that's just to keep the PLA melted and have the nozzle keep up with all the filament being pushed out. But that poses another problem, that's air. You need a ton of air to cool down the previous layer so that the new layer has something to build on. If it's not cooled down properly, it would just deform and, and not be as good. Something else I found, and, and maybe I shouldn't complain about this, because I would argue this machine cannot do a bad first layer. Every single first layer has been absolutely flawless, but the startup sequence is just painfully long. It's a solid five minute startup sequence. If you're printing something small, there's a good chance that the startup sequence is longer than the actual print you're making. Okay, okay, my bad, it's, it's seven minutes, seven minutes. However, I can't stop wondering what would happen if we swap out the nozzle to a much larger one. We're rocking a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. That's how 100% of the 3D printers come stock. That would be a fun challenge to cut the print time in half just by adding a much larger nozzle. Of course, sacrificing a lot of quality. In fact, that's what I did. I used my four nicest drill bits from Timu just to try and open up that nozzle. It was just too hard with the hardened steel. So that's gonna have to be for the next video. All right, thanks for watching. I'm working on a heavy lift drone. That's gonna be the next video. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It just seems to make them a little more popular and I appreciate that. All right, have a nice, fuck. Have an awesome day, bye.